These guys aren't that stupid, guys. Spycraft, the idea of tradecraft, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Cold War, subversion, sabotage, all the things, spy games, literally comes from that relationship that America um, had with intelligence agents on the ground in Moscow and this game in spy wars and spy games we were playing with each other. They are not stupid. So if you see something on the surface, immediately think something go is going on uh, in the underground. Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Prep Life. Let's talk about personal security a little bit. Had an awesome class this weekend in Utah. Uh, we, we did the last class in Heber City, Utah, uh, which is about 6,000 square foot, where we're moving down to Provo, Utah, where the next class in August, which will be personal security, um, it's going to be the close quarters home defense will be next. So everybody that came out, it was all women's course for personal security. We had a great time, but I also learned a lot from the class. One, we had a lot of women that had personal experiences and very specific reasons for being in training. One of the reasons was they had experienced the trauma of trying to fight through self-defense in real life and not having the tools or tactics or understanding which brought them to the training. And we had one instance where one of the scenarios that I did was similar to one of the actual real life scenarios that one of the ladies had been through. It was tough. It was emotional, but she got through it. Now, one personal courage is, is part of this because you have to be willing to expose yourself to vulnerabilities and weakness in order to make yourself better, to grow, to develop. And that happens a lot. Naturally it happens in trauma we go through in life, but deliberately putting ourselves in that circumstance is very beneficial because we learn so much more. You know, a lot of people think self-defense is about the technical thing. You know, uh, taking the gun from a concealed carry, uh, aligning it on target and breaking shots where I want them to be. That's certainly a part of it, but that's a technical nuance as compared to the decision-making. Operating and making decisions under stress and understanding your triggers even the source triggers and trauma that you've experienced and how that will affect your ability to fight through adversity, fight through difficult situations. This certainly happened with this lady because all the things that she was going through in real time in this scenario with the role player who happened to be me, she had a fight through. And so she had the willingness to fight, but she didn't have the technical tools to bear. So we need both, right? We need the technical tools and we need the willingness to fight, the mindset and resilience to fight. So we got through it, but it took a lot of positive affirmation. We rallied as a class to get her through it. And I think we had a breakthrough. And, and that's important. Your, your breakthrough might be very small where you go, man, I, I expected this and I learned this little thing. And I'm going to add that to my toolkit. You know, when I went to Cameron Haynes' experience, um, we got to go to uh, the Bow Rack, which is a very small town bow shop outside of Eugene, Oregon. I, it might be in Eugene. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong if you know the uh, bow shop I'm talking about. 30 plus years this place has been in business. And I got to work with the owner who saw me shoot. Uh, you can see this on YouTube, by the way, on Cameron Haynes' uh, YouTube channel. But he's seeing me shoot, and I'm shooting a little bit different. One, my normal bow, my PSC, I shoot 80 pounds, and it's carbon. It's very lightweight. In this bow setup, I'm shooting a Hoyt at 70 pounds. So pulling it back, I'm like, oh, 70 pounds, I can pull that all day. It's nothing. So I'm very relaxed on the bow. So that changes a couple things in how I hold it and how I position it that he picked up on. These small, technical, very seemingly unimportant things he picked up on. And then I went back to a trigger setup versus a uh, release setup. Like I like the knock, but I also like the trigger because I'm used to pulling triggers on guns. So it's very intuitive for me. So just those small dials allow me to consciously improve. And then that allowed me to break the record at 135 yards. No big deal on Cameron Haynes show. 
I, I think I beat Chad Mendez and Derek Wolf, their records. I mean, those guys are capable of shooting at that distance. I just got the opportunity to shoot at a further distance because of how dialed I was with just technical nuance. So seemingly what I mean is the details, the details matter. Getting back to basics and focusing on fundamentals always matter. All right, moving on. Let's talk about the Wagner Group. This has been like in the national media and headlines, even today, across the board. All of them are covering this the same since June 23rd when the head of Wagner Group, I know it's Wagner Group, but I'm saying Wagner because it's literally a W. The head of Wagner Group said that he wasn't being supported and he was being attacked by Russians. And he was criticizing military leaders of the Russian Federation. Now, here's what a lot of people don't realize. The Wagner Group is not like a PMC for profit. They're not a paramilitary organization that that are contractors for profit. They are funded by the state. Vladimir Putin funds this PMC. And you would ask yourself, like, why would you fund a PMC as a government? Because, you know, the United States government doesn't fund, I mean, Technically, they kind of do because they give them the jobs, but they don't fund Blackwater. Blackwater funds itself. They get the job, and then they get paid. But PMC Wagner is funded by the state. Now, the reason that exists, which this type of format has existed throughout history, is because you have plausible deniability. You could do the dirty work that the conventional military or conventional state or conventional actor can't do. And this has been done by PMC Wagner in Africa, in Afghanistan, in Syria, and certainly, certainly in uh, Ukraine. So they're bearing the brunt because they don't have conventional methodology and processes. They don't have to get approval and go through generals and all this convention. They could be the insurgent. They could be radically extreme, including up to the point of committing uh, uh, atrocities. Right um, now, the head of Wagner Group has criticized openly. This happened a couple months ago that he wasn't being supported, and even showing vid- videotapes of his guys being like dying, his guys dead on the ground, calling the leaders back in in Moscow pigs, um, threatening people. I, I think one a lot of people that I saw who commented on these things, respected him as a a combatant leader. And certainly a guy who's a leader of an organization who's out in the battlefield, um, who's actually walking the line, is very different. We're not used to seeing that because in conventional militaries, the general is on the horse or um, he's in the vehicle. He's in the tactical operations center, but he's certainly not on the battlefield with the men. So this man is well-respected. And when he came out recently and said he was going to go to Moscow and hold people accountable because he was getting attacked by Russian soldiers, a lot of people didn't like this. I imagine part of the conflict is the jealousy and infighting leader to leader, all vowing and all trying to get Vladimir Putin's uh, approval. It seems like it's that. But the first thing I see across the board when the national media is on the same sheet of music as the same national media that was being weaponized by the Department of Justice, the Democratic Party, to go to social media platforms and to target Americans and political opponents, and certainly using the national media as a propaganda arm, I think there's something else going on here. I don't know. Like, maybe the fact that we misallocated $6.2 billion of funds going to Ukraine and nobody's talking about it. As a headline, um, that happened. I mean, they misappropriated or misidentified the equipment. It wasn't $6.2 billion in cash, but it might as well be cash. They can make those gross mistakes in an audit, but yeah, $600 in your Venmo, that's going to be a problem. We got to talk about that. So again, a lot of issues going on back and forth, but I want you to remember Vladimir Putin was the head of of the KGB, a career intelligence officer, and very good at what he does. So when I see them openly saying that the head of Wagner was treasonous in his actions and he was going to go after him, I mean, basically putting a a, uh, warrant 
out for his arrest, and he would be executed, certainly, for mutiny and treason in Russia. That was a big deal. But there's something else going on there. Now, I don't know what it is. Partly, uh, I know Ukraine showed its ass in several ways because they started moving in different directions as Wagner pulled out, and now all of those battle plans have been identified by the Russians. Now, I don't know what was done on purpose, but I'll tell you what, something was done on purpose and something was very deliberate. These guys aren't that stupid, guys. Spycraft, the idea of tradecraft, the Central Intelligence Agency, the Cold War, subversion, sabotage, all the things, spy games, literally comes from that relationship that America um, had with intelligence agents on the ground in Moscow and this game in spy wars and spy games we were playing with each other. They are not stupid. So if you see something on the surface, immediately think something go- is going on uh, in the underground. Um, by the way, talking about the underground, I'll be talking about the underground right after this on patreon.com forward slash Mike Glover. If you haven't realized this is ad-free as content, I do this free for you guys, but are mainly supported by patron members. If you're not a Patreon member, as a tier one member, you can get special content. And as a member member, you can get the underground where I talk about the real way I feel about certain things because I can't talk on YouTube exclusively without getting suppressed. So I got the underground. Check it out in the links down below, patreon.com forward slash underground. Let's talk about this heat wave as it relates to preparedness. One, Texas is about 20 degrees above what it should be, and that is migrating everywhere, including Georgia, Tennessee, Missouri. The list goes on. That is scary, guys. 120 plus degree heat indexes. That doesn't take long for you to go into uh, a heat stroke or become a heat casualty, which is very dangerous for elderly people. And like I say this, and most people don't care, but if your neighbor's elderly, pay attention, guys. If the electricity goes out, they're sick, they're wheel- wheelchair bound, and they can't get out, they might be a victim of this, and it could be prevented by policing up our own community. Um, that is migrating into Tennessee, which I'll be this weekend. I'll be doing a book signing, a seminar, and a pistol gunfighter pistol course, but it will be indoors. Make sure you drink water, stay hydrated, and take care of one another, especially as these things change. I love how everybody's like talking about the climate, and, and uh, this is what happens when you have gas cars and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, what is happening? What, what is happening? What's fascinating, I didn't talk about this um, before, but I went into um, Home Depot on Father's Day to buy a chainsaw because they're an Echo dealer. And I wanted a very specific 21-inch um, chainsaw I had seen all the reviews, and I, my Husqvarna had fell up, fallen apart. No, no offense to Husqvarna. I threw a chain. It was likely my fault, but I wanted a bigger chainsaw anyway. My excuse. I go to Home Depot, and they don't have one gas-operated tool, period. Period. The weed whackers, the lawnmowers, nothing is gas-operated. I mean, they did have a couple of gas-operated lawnmowers, but no chainsaws, no blowers, nothing. And I went to the guy, and I'm like, hey, what's going on? And this is in Park City, which is a little bit more liberal than uh, other places. And he said, yeah, Home Depot is trying to make a change. They're going all electric because they want to get away from carbon emissions. And I'm like, yeah, but if we have more dependency, I'm not going to debate the guy. But I I tell you, if we have more dependency on electricity, we're putting more strain on a power grid that is provided by, by coal and hydroelectric dam, and other means of electricity, which also have a signature and footprint and carbon emissions. Anyways, I digress. I I thought it was fascinating that Home Depot, because they're a little woke, don't have gas chainsaws. They did have one in the clearance section that happened to be the one that I wanted, and the guy sold it to me for 150 bucks. It's a $600 chainsaw, so thanks, Home Depot. I appreciate you guys. Um, Also wanted to mention that um, I'm dropping new courses. Uh, We're dropping courses in Colorado, dropping courses in Montana. Those will be available on foodcraftsurvival.com. And also our app is going to be up in two weeks. Now, we had to push our app back 30 days. We soft launched it with the web version, but the education in all things preparedness, first aid, self-defense. I teach a special block on there. All the things 
will be available on app around July 4th. At the same time, our new bags drop, our 2040s and 80s, which are hunter orange or emergency orange, which are my favorite colors in the in the uh, in the setup. If you're if you're looking at mobility and loadout, um, one because you could see it. It's like the same color as a VS17 panel. If you haven't seen one of those, it's Googleable. It's Googleable. Um, also, rewilding. I talked about it on Cameron Haynes' podcast. Rewilding is up and available. All of them are sold out except for one. I think I have a couple slots left. But the ultimate idea for rewilding is getting back to basics. Now, that's a course that I teach. It's about stripping dopamine out of your system, all the cool stuff. But let's set that aside. You can do this on your own with your family, guys. Take the opportunity to get outdoors, get away from your cell phone. Right now, more than ever, the, the social chaos and calamity and toxic crap on social media is, dude, I can't even keep up with it. It's, it is so dramatic. I go online, I get the content that I want, I get the benefit that I want, and I step away. Do that same thing. Spend less time on your cell phone and spend more time with your family outdoors and start building resilience. I love you guys. appreciate you guys. I hope you have a good week, and I'll see you in Tennessee this weekend. I think uh, Colorado, no, Phoenix, Arizona after that, and then Colorado after that. Uh, every single weekend I'm out there doing the thing, and I appreciate you guys because I do it for you. Till next time. Peace out, guys.